idea to research question by Dr. Pratibha Pereira, Professor, Department of Geriatric Medicines, JSS Medical College, Mysore. Dr. Pratibha has completed her MBBS and MD General Medicine from Kasturba Medical College. She has also completed PG Diploma in Geriatric Medicine from MS Ramaya Medical College. She is a certified NABH assessor and Madam has over two decades of teaching experience for undergraduate and postgraduate students. She was also the founder of Geriatric Clinic in Mangalore and Geriatric Clinic in JSS Hospital. She has over 30 publications in national and international journals. With no further ado, I request Pratima Madam to take over. This opportunity. So my thing is when, how do you change an idea into a, uh, a research question? I was amazed at Dr. Muriel's introduction and there was a lot of take home message from what he said, I think he has just summarized and covered up today's entire lecture. Uh, as usual, I have taken a lot of messages from there. So whenever we uh, look at research, I think many of us don't understand that there are different types. We have qualitative, where we ask questions, what, why, and how. Then we have quantitative, where and when, and we can do both things. Now, whenever we take, I think this is exactly what Dr. Miguel was trying to say. Uh, when you think, what should I do? Your, your arrows are all over the place and you don't know what you're supposed to do. Sometimes you're, you're pushed to publish because so that you get your promotion. Sometimes you're pushed to publish so that you can complete your PhD. And there are various other reasons. So uh, in, in all, your passion with Dr. Muriel was uh, talking about is completely lost because we have no time to think about the passion. So where does the research idea can come from? It can come from anywhere, anywhere. Your professional, your personal, or a problem can be a research idea. Especially a problem which you see in your clinical practice, that can become a research idea. Then you can raise a research question. And finally, you can get some solutions. Now, for many practitioners, this translation of clinical query, we have so many queries that this is an idea for research into formal scientific investigation. That is the hurdle in this process that Dr. Muriel was talking about. Now, Stephen Johnson's epic book, you can read this book where he says, where good ideas come from. It doesn't come from sitting alone and trying to think, imagine it. It just comes from bringing all your problems on the table, putting it on the table and sorting it out. So you have to improve your ability to generate these ideas and so that it will be of some use to someday. So I guess you have to develop an idea. First of all, idea is of what use am I going to be to the community or to the population at large? And then we need to look at the infrastructure, the participants, and we have to factors which stimulate research idea. As Dr. Muriel said, I agree there has to be passion and then there has to be knowledge. It's something like this inverted. So what we do, we have to lot, lot amount of time we have to spend in what is it that I need to do that may become a topic and then going on to working knowledge, everything, then you come down, working is just at the tip. But we do the inverted, we start off working and then at the end we don't realize what is the topic and what is the working knowledge and when I try to raise questions, it just doesn't come and what I wanted to do, what I'm doing, it just doesn't match. So idea why it is important to have an idea it opens up the scope now let me give an example i have interest in movies and you have an idea of unusual characters so your idea will your scope will broaden up so example if you don't have an idea you narrow it down to a field of zombies now you stick to the field of zombies and you don't know what to do with it this is a narrow field now let us say research idea one more stress and athletic performance now this is an idea now you can get the research question out of this thing. Now do college athletes experience greater level of stress than the other college students? Or how do college students cope up with stress? So without an idea, you can never build a good research question and you can never have a research, then nothing happens. So the starting thing for anything is an idea. You generate it and that idea should come with what you think is a problem, your passion and little bit of in-depth knowledge in that area you have. Then you search for queries, what is not there. Now research problem, scientific topic, let's say climate change. For here, you, that's an idea, you put a research question. 
Now that's an area of focus of regarding research problem over here. Now you can think, okay, how do ozone levels impact uh, global temperature levels? So you have your, your uh, specific idea of topic is a climate change. So what is worrying you here? Now that should become your research question and then you go about putting up further design of that. Now the hurdle, as I said, is translation of these clinical queries into problem, into formal scientific investigation, because they're never trained in this. In no field do they train us to do this because research as such in Indian scenario, Indian thing, it is never a yardstick for any kind of uh, you know, value add to that student. So I will give you key steps as I have taken it. So uh, it is first you choose an idea. Next, remember you find a mentor. Now you have, you, uh, you want about, I will say you want to do something about epidemiology. The one person who will be a mentor for you is Dr. J.P. Mulligan. Now you have to catch up with a mentor like that. And then you go on to develop, build a literature. Never ever uh, start up a thesis topic or your research question without thorough literature search. Because literature search is going to tell you every literature search in that area will leave, leave a paragraph called as limitations. So you will understand by those limitations which are the area they're not able to answer. Why is it so? And you can build up on it and go back into your research idea. You have brainstorm yourself. I will introduce you to pick a framework then you build your research question, then you evaluate what you're doing by final criteria, then your research question will come in an answerable format. Now let's take osteoarthritis pain and impairment. Idea is, okay, I have some exercise and training for osteoarthritis. Now I, I, I'm very much interested in muscle strengthening. Now you, you know that that is not becoming very effective. So you put up a question. Now how am I going to improve muscle strength effectively? Now I'm going to do a lot of uh, research, literature search in this field. Now I get a question. Now healthy individuals do I take or I take osteoarthritis? If I'm going to study well and I want to compare, I will take healthy individuals about 60. That is my patient. And in high resistance, I'm going to take up um, a re resistant training or am I going to take up uh, less resistance training? I'm going to see that. Okay. So then I'm going to find out what is going to improve my muscle strengthening and O is six weeks. Now what is P-I-C-O-T? P-I is my patient whom I'm going to address. That is the population or the problem, whatever it is. I is intervention. Now what is the intervention I'm going to do? That will be my indicator. Now what is C? Comparison group. Now who am I going to compare it with? O is what? Outcomes. And T is time. Unless I have clarity on this, my idea will never ever get into a proper research question. I have to answer all these areas of question. And then I go into building up of research problem. So this is what is called a spigot, population of problem. I take the sample of subjects that will be addressed. I do intervention, how I'm going to end goal. I'm going to do a comparator with whom I'm going to compare it. Outcomes corresponding, my outcome should correspond to the main. Most often we see that idea is something which they say is hypothesis, objectives don't match, the research title don't match, and that becomes a very difficult proposition. Now I am going to give another example. Say you have an idea of headache. Now you want to check in children whether placebo is more effective uh, in it, but for pain or by, by paracetamol. Now, I want all of you who are listening to me to work on it. Now, who is going to be your quickly work? You can put it on a chat. Who is your population? Who is your intervention? What do you want to compare with? What's your outcome of interest? So now, I'm giving you an idea, headache. I've sort of built a research. Now, I want you to make it into a definite research question. Is this idea of headache? Can I convert it into a research question? This is my exercise for you. Please do it. So next, you have to strengthen it by your final criteria. Once you have a research question, you're ready with the research question. You have to validate your research question. Unless you validate, you, you cannot have a research design. So you go with the final criteria. Feasibility, is it feasible? Is it interesting? Is it novel? Is it ethical? Is it relevant? Trust me, that doesn't have to be novel all the time. Everybody will leave feasibility, interesting, ethical, relevant. They'll take, try to search an idea which is novel. They'll go after novel 
and then nothing really comes out of it. So if I go to study sleeping sickness, some marker in the city of Mysuru where I don't see sleeping sickness, but it's a very novel marker which is coming to the market. I think that doesn't serve any purpose to me or to my community. That's exactly what Dr. Mulyan was trying to say. So whenever we say take feasibility, go into the depth of it. Have technical experts working with you, mentors, what's your framework, what is the equipment. And so you have to spend a lot, lot, lot of time whether it's feasible or not. Whether your idea converting into research question, is it feasible or not? Sometimes we choose an esoteric, but it never becomes feasible. At the end of it, uh, you know, when you go for statistical analysis, nothing really comes. Then you try to manipulate the data. As Dr. Muriel said, you, uh, you know, uh, journals want p-value and all sorts of statistics. So you try to uh, accommodate the statistics to it. So it, it becomes very difficult. And then never ever go for money spending costly design. Uh, one doesn't need that at all. So it has to be interesting. Interesting, uh, you know, to the scientific community only, not at all. It has to be interesting to everybody. So at the end, what is you're going to serve uh, for the community is very important. So you have to have, uh, you know, us uh, people in the same interest, find out funding in, in institution who are interested in the same thing, uh, get the feedback of general community when you're trying your idea into research question. Well, novel, yeah, innovations is very, very good, but don't run after novel when you're beginning uh, as a, uh, uh, you know, initial person, don't go into novel. At the end of it, somebody is talking on ethics, it has to be ethical. Never ever do without reading complete ethics. ICM, uh, in India, it's ICMR guideline, GCP guideline, they're talking about it. Remember, it has to be, I'm going to do some esoteric and I would draw so much of blood. My idea is to find out this, this, this. Now you're going to trouble a subject drawing so much amount of blood in about 10, 10 minutes. Now that is why you have to see the ethical. As I said, it has to be relevant and irrelevant just because it's something, it doesn't work. So answerable inquiry. So research question is answerable inquiry into a specific concern or issue. That's answering your idea. Now I'm not going to go into uh, this example. So we say, uh, what does research do? It identifies the scope of your research. That is very, very important. It identifies scope. So our identifying branch or sub-branch or area of knowledge. Now you choose organizing or scope you want to research on. So you can go into, uh, you know, about microeconomic sub-branch, you can go to whatever you want to do. Then you formulate, I'm revising again, you formulate a general focus of research question. Question. For example, uh, you know, uh, I, I'm uh, trying to study or I, I, I interrogative question particles that you should know how to use your interrogative. Uh, why, what, and how? Where do you place this what? Where do you place this why? Where do you place this how? Is very, very important. Uh, choose one of it first. Not that you cannot have all the three. So that is very, very important for you. General question like, uh, analysis, uh, trying to evaluate. Now these things is not going to help you. They're just going to leave you in the dark. So, and then you have to answer whether your theory, you have to build a narrative, very, very important on it. Now, many people confuse theory as something. No, theory is not what you see in textbooks. These are ideas. You should know how it's going to relate to one another when you become a research question. That is uh, theory. What is the belief you have? What is the technical ideas? For example, Keynes' statement said, men are disposed as a rule and on average to increase their consumption as their income increases. But not as much as increases in their income. Now that's a theory. So if the idea is you try to connect one another, that's the theory. So building up narrative and theory is very, very important. You can tell a tale of tales of a cat. So you can tell a tale of whatever it sees, but everything gives an idea, just a tale here. But you should know what is the theory of building? What is the narrative you want to build? What is it that you want to throw out of it? Do you want to prove a cat which is alert and interested? Or you want a friendly and a content or study you're doing? But if you take it, you don't have an idea. You just take a cat's tail and try to bring all these variables. You're not going to get a research question at all. So therefore, 
interrogative particle is your idea, research idea, you subbranch it, you go into the scope of the organization involved, and that is a research question. So I'm just ending up with an example. Is the risk of having breast cancer higher in symptom-free women with a positive mammograph as compared to symptom-free women with a negative mammograph? So you put population, investigative result, comparative result, and outcome. So it's very important whenever you have a question, please use the picket and uh, you will and the final criteria. So in 20 minutes, I have tried to take you through of how to build an idea. Idea is passion, idea is interest, idea is knowledge. Do a research search on the article, see the limitations, what has other research have got. Take on that, have a mentor, let the mentor sit with you, convert it into a kind of a research question, do pick it. Do the thorough narrative, what we call as theory, and then you have a good research question which has outcomes ready for you and ready to prepare a good research design. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Pratibha, madam, for the wonderful session on research idea with live example.